Hello, welcome to Totally Cosmic, the Down to Earth Astrology Show. I'm Sanjay, and I'm Sinx, and we are your hosts and in house astrologers for Naya TV. On today's show, we put the focus on Pluto, and we've got the regular cosmic news and weather. So, first up, let's look at Pluto. So, Pluto, I find this transit. Uh, fascinating mainly because I'm on the back of a pretty hardcore Pluto transit which basically stopped everything in its tracks in my life and all the ways I was operating uh, were brought to a swift end and I had to really think about how I was going to do things differently but in that process uh, I was literally on my knees looking up at the sky and p people talk about Pluto as it being uh, a dark night of the soul and there's definitely a feeling of that kind of energy that's happening now for the whole collective so yeah Pluto is a powerful destructive force that is um, ultimately empowering but it takes you out in the in the process understatement <laughs> <laughs> definite understatement as far as Pluto is concerned it has been in Capricorn for many years now. It's a very slow moving body and it's the furthest out. You could call it a planet, but it's not classified technically as a planet anymore. X planet now, <laughs> dwarf planet maybe. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's been in Capricorn since 2008. So it's a familiar energy, but it has been moving through the sign consistently and is making great sweeping changes all the way from the financial restructure of the 2008 all the way up until now in 2020 where you're having the global restructure in regards to health um, system, the government system and basically everything connected to the authorities and the boundaries and restrictions of us even being able to travel. So yeah, yeah Capricorn yeah. is definitely boundary oriented. So that, that I find that so interesting that at this time where there's all this massive energy from Pluto that's that's literally tearing down every system that we've, we've built our lives upon, that let's just say they, the powers that be, um, have declassified that planet. It does seem a little bit strange to me. <laughs> um, yeah. If we're being totally honest, I mean, Pluto, uh, it rules the kind of large society in terms of like the power structure, but it also deals with um, the underworld so I kind of think yeah. it's maybe a more purposeful event than uh -huh. it would may seem initially. <laughs> I mean, the underworld don't really come leaving a big massive calling card saying, here we are. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Although potentially maybe sometimes all that hidden in plain sight malarkey. <laughs> yeah, and that is the genius. and uh, The, the magic wisdom. of it, of the occult. Yeah, Pluto is very much a hand in that. Yeah. So, while you're pondering that, I'll just read a little blurb from NASA's website, whether we can trust them or not. It says, Pluto, which is smaller than Earth's moon, has a heart-shaped glacier that's the size of Texas and Oklahoma. This fascinating world has blue skies, spinning moons, mountains as high as the Rockies, and it snows, but the snow is in red. Ooh. Sounds like quite a cool place for a ski holiday. If you had the right attire. Uh, talking of the weather, let's now hand it over to Cynthia for the cosmic news and weather forecast. Hello! Earthlings. Wowie. Welcome to your cosmic news and forecast. I'm Cynthia Starburst and these are the headlines. Strict controlling Saturn in human focused Aquarius tries to bring in jab passports. Expansive Jupiter in freedom seeking Aquarius rebels against them. And Uranus the planet of the unpredictable in the sign of money, money, money. Taurus 
brings about flurries of excitement, public interest, and boost in profit of the cryptocurrencies. Now it's over to Supernora for a look at the cosmic forecast in your part of the universe. Nora? On May the 20th, the sun enters Gemini. We can feel very sparky, full of ideas and determination to take action on them. Learning new stuff and having a sense that we are constantly evolving can be very apparent here. Now, the shadow side to this can be a bit of mental restlessness and we can end up talking the hind legs off a donkey. So, it's good to use our brains in a way that is purposeful and insightful. Writing down all your words and emptying your head can be a good way to make sense of everything. On the 23rd, Saturn goes retrograde in Aquarius. Now, unlike me, Saturn loves rules and regulations. He's a very domineering influence, like a strict fag the figure who thinks he knows what's right for us. Now, there are many positive Saturnian traits that benefits humanity to develop, such as responsibility, accountability, and clear boundaries. He's also very linked to karma and past lives. So during this transit, we are collectively wrapping up past lives. Now, some other sides to Saturn can be a little bit full on, as they say. While he's going backwards, it can actually become stronger. And while he's in the sign of Aquarius, this can lead to him trying to replace more restriction and control over people. Now, while on paper this sounds pretty rubbish, it's important to remember that the universe has got our back and that strict limitations on the rule-breaking sign of Aquarius can ultimately cause a liberation of the people. We can think of this time and Saturn having the background foundation of our lives. And now, as he switched signs from Capricorn to Aquarius, we are all getting used to a new normal. As the lives of all of us globally are being affected by restrictions in one way or another, it's time for us to open up and rewrite the rule book ourselves with a sense of karmic responsibility to do right by ourselves and our planet. On the 26th, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. Oh, now we're onto something zesty with this one. Here's a science bit. During a lunar eclipse, the sun, earth and moon are lined up, creating an earth butty. Now, this can have a huge impact on our emotional world and our relationships with ourselves and others. It's encouraging us to have a big reset. It's like a big cosmic hand coming down and giving us a nudge in the realm of growth and expansion. Now, Sagittarius is the type of energy we all need right now. It's warm, generous, optimistic, and able to see the bigger picture. So, old stories that we've told ourselves of how we're supposed to live or how we're supposed to earn a living are being challenged here. We might feel to learn something totally new, something that gives our life meaning and purpose, something that really lights us up because Sag is all about joy, celebration, and being grateful for the good things in life. This is a permission slip to laugh hard and loud <laughs> where possible. <laughs> so good luck to you and use your time wisely. 
Now, the last transit of the month, Mercury goes retrograde in Gemini. So, the planet of communication is going backwards in the sign of communication, which means it's a good time to slow down and take your time to send emails, texts, and communicate with people. Communication can get a bit clunky and technology can go airwire. If you prepare for this, then you can swap out frustration for understanding. If your email never reaches its destination, or if somebody you're in dialogue with gets the complete wrong end of the stick, it's a time for all the R's. Reevaluate, reassess, research, and reinvent. Maybe you want to change how you engage with social media or how you get from A to B. Your mind can naturally go over what it's perceived as mistakes during this time and self correct when Mercury goes forwards again in June. So that's it from me today. It's been a pleasure chatting with you all. I'm going to hand you back to Cynthia now in the studio. Ta ra! Super! Thank you, Nora. Now it's time to get up close and personal with your horoscopes. Here's the man himself, Mr. Sinks. It's over to you. What are you saying, people? Back to shooting for Totally Cosmic. And um, yeah, thanks, Cynthia. Got that, got that. This month, the second half of May, yeah, it's going to be very interesting for the fact that although it starts in Taurus season from like May 15th, 16th onwards, it's going to move into Gemini season. So the sun's going to enter Gemini and um, alongside that we've literally just recently had just before the 15th is Jupiter move into the sign of Pisces so guess what people Jupiter is known as one of the traditional rulers of Pisces and with this being the case Jupiter is back at one of its home signs so welcome home Jupiter we're gonna have some great expansion in terms of maybe I know some of the spiritual sides of life some of those hidden secrets that you don't really see on the surface because Pisces definitely like deals with that so people let me get to it for the signs I am um, going to start with Taurus because it's still your month <laughs> sorry Aries got to wait till last this time so Taurus it starts with like all of these planets still in your first house but really what's going to happen is planets are going to move and shift through to your second house into Gemini or at least the sun and the focus is going to be more on your finances and you're going to be looking at what you did spend last month or the first part of the month and um, recouping and maybe looking at things to add to that in terms of technology and information. After you, Taurus, you've got Gemini and Gemini birthday season representing for the purple one that is Prince that was a Gemini. So I'll give you a little bit of flavour and say that with the sun shining into your sign halfway through the month of May, you're going to have that thing of coming out from the, uh, the shadows into the limelight. Definitely have to say that for you guys, Gemini. So it's going to be all about you towards the second half of the month. So we're going to uh, be looking forward to your get-togethers. Cancer. Cancer for you. With this shift, you're going to have the situation of it being your turn to step into the shadows and get a bit of time to recoup. Because from the 11th house, it moves over to the 12th house. And the 12th house is the place where Pisces kind of has a great influence of being in the background in isolation, meditation, um, and just yeah, healing also in a quiet way. So while you're in the shadows, Cancer, that's definitely something to, to consider. And um, it's going to be your birthday move after Gemini. So until then, just, you know, fall back for a moment. You've got this. Uh, Leo. Leo, you guys, you're going to be in a situation that Cancer was in last month, where it's going to shift from out of the 10th house for you and into the 11th. And it's going to be dealing more with your 
hopes, wishes, dreams, ideals, things that you've been looking at for a long time, friendships, networks, all of those things. So maybe some getting together of the minds and your friends and those things that you like to share with, you know, loved ones that you really get on that vibe with. So Leo, definitely looking at uh, hearing from you this month. <laughs> Virgo, Virgo, for yourself, you're in a different situation now where it shifted from a ninth house of foreign travel long distance philosophy um, and things that you kind of believe in all the way through to the 10th house of career, vocation and public recognition. So this is going to be partly your time to be in the P's and Q's, to P's and Q's, let me get it right Virgo. So as I say, 10th house kind of puts you out there in the spotlight, everyone's kind of going to know what you're on. So I take it to you to, you know, take care of business. You know how to do that, Virgo. Libra. Libra. So it's going to be shifting from the 8th house into your ninth house. And this is a little bit more pleasurable after dealing with the 8th house of joint finances and taxes and whatnot. So with Libra, you've got the situation of looking into what you're going to be doing in the future, what you believe, some of your philosophies, maybe even thinking about long distance travel. It's your time, Libra. You might get a bit lucky. After you, Libra, we know it is Scorpio. So, Scorpio, you got a bit of a mix this month. I'm thinking of friends because they have that Scorpio in them. And um, yeah, what you're going to have there is going out of the seventh house into your own house of power, like that house of um, hidden things, secrets, situation based is going to be a situation you knowing that you're going to be behind the scenes and this is where you operate at your best for if you're going to leave it there you like to keep it you know, okay. Sagittarius Sagittarius you're in a different situation so Gemini is your partner side so when things shift from Taurus into Gemini we'll be looking at you on the public spectrum dealing with business um, public relationships I would say marriages possibly as well but things that you definitely have maybe committed to and contract so Sagittarius, the spotlight is going to be on that for you in terms of your people and maybe partnering up. So that's something to consider Sagittarius. Capricorn, this time around, yeah, um, we've got a situation where all these planets move into your sixth house. Now where a lot of people kind of shirk the work, I say Capricorn, use are not that sign. So you're definitely going to make the most of the planets in the sixth house. Maybe possibly looking at new jobs, looking at things that you've had to learn, the back burner that you've to fix. that's something that the third house deals with these days a lot of communication so Aries you know what to do like uh, get your mail out and check your inbox <laughs> so wrapping up for totally cosmic um, absolutely um, 
love him representing for Manchester. And this month is going to be just so filled with like different energy with Jupiter moving into Pisces. So looking forward to being with you in the future. Till then, stay safe. Back to Cynthia in the studio. Signing off. Thank you. Sinks there with the deeds from the streets. Now, I wish you a zesty and transformational month. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, stay cosmic. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, watch, watch this space. space.